I have been in Dubai for more than 20 years. Went back after six months of maternity and I was realizing that, you know, it's not working for me. I think Dubai is a place which is really relationship driven, uh, network driven, who you know. Yes, they come here and they are earning, you know, decent salaries compared to what they would back home, but they end up spending a lot. Hey guys, welcome to Oxyvlogs. In this episode, I'm gonna interview a Dubai expert who quit her career at multinational corporation Procter & Gamble to become a millennial career coach. So let's get started. Could you introduce yourself in a couple of words? Hi, I'm Samia. I'm from Pakistan. I have been in Dubai for more than 20 years. I grew up here uh, and then I moved back home and now I've been here since 2009. What did you do before you came to Dubai and why did you decide to come here? So yeah, so like I said, I grew up here, so my family was here and then we moved back home where I studied, I started working, so I, I was working with Procter & Gamble in Pakistan and then they transferred me here to Dubai in uh, 2009 and I jumped on the opportunity and I came. How did you start your career in Dubai and what were some of the challenges you faced? Yeah. So although I grew up in Dubai, the part of Dubai I grew up in was very different from when I came again in 2009, you know, the, the country, the city transformed. Um, and also career-wise, I felt like uh, the same company back home and here is a bit different, obviously in terms of culture, the multi-ethnicities, diversity of people, uh, the way things work. So I think I had a lot to learn in terms of, you know, uh, the way things work and how you work with different people especially. Why did you go back to Pakistan before you came back to Dubai again? So I, I went back just because my dad didn't have a job and you know, so he didn't have a job, he didn't have visa, so we had to go back and then the, me coming back here was a coincidence, was luck. I was going to go, they were going to transfer me to Geneva last minute, it changed and it became Dubai and I was super happy for Dubai because you know, I have a lot of friends, family grew up here, it's very close to home, it's like an hour and a half flight back home. How was it to work at the multinational corporation Procter & Gamble? My experience was great. Uh, PNG is a great company. It's a great company globally. Here as well, I got the opportunity to work on different assignments. I was working uh, from when I moved in 2009 until I left in 2016. So eight years, uh, a lot of different brands, products. Uh, I was in marketing, brand management, was creating advertising, working on packaging, uh, different campaigns uh, across the region. So Middle East, Africa, Pakistan, Turkey, India. What challenges did you face when you came back to Dubai? I think the first challenge was living on my own because um, it was the first time I was away from my family and had to do everything on my own. Um, I think the company and uh, my friends circle and network helped a lot there. So making it the, you know, the relocation process easier, getting a house, getting a car, the license. I mean, this was back in 2009. So, you know, it was uh, <laughs> the good old days. Um, and uh, yeah, just getting acquainted with how um, to live on your own and to have a social circle and network and support system of people people you can rely on uh, because I think when you're living in your home country or with family you take these things for granted and you already have that network and here when you start from scratch somewhere you have to build it up and grow and have again people and friends that you can bank on. Why did you leave your job at PNG? So yeah, after after more than 10 years with PNG, I think it was about time I moved on to something else. So I, as much as I loved my job and I enjoyed my time there, I think uh, I was getting gravitating more towards people development than just brand development. So even in the last couple of years in PNG, I was doing a lot of uh, recruitment, training, mentoring, coaching. So I think um, it really propelled me to start my own business and to really focus on how I can help people uh, accelerate in their careers. Yeah, so another reason I left PNG is because of flexibility. I wanted more flexibility and freedom in my life, especially that I had uh, a daughter. My daughter was a year and a half when I left PNG, but I um, went back after six months of maternity and I was realizing that, you know, it's not working for me. Like, I'm, I'm very career minded, very ambitious, very professional, but if I'm going to leave her somewhere, daycare, nursery, whatever, the time that I spend away from her has to make sense. It has to be meaningful, it has to be fulfilling. So, on one hand, there was this struggle of finding meaning and passion in what I do. And and on the other, pure flexibility, like eight to four or nine to five, being away and just being at one place and not being able to uh, see her, breastfeed her, you know, all the things that a new mom has to do was, was 
stuff. So I think now that I have my own business, flexibility is the top of my list in terms of my criteria. Like I love how diverse my work is. So I work with multiple uh, people, companies. Uh, I speak, I write, I train, I coach, I facilitate. Um, and then as well, I manage my day and my time and my week accordingly. So there are some days which are full of meetings back to back, some days which is downtime, some days where I have to be with my daughter and spend time with her, some days where I'm recording, shooting. So it really, you know, there's a lot of uh, flexibility around my schedule and agenda. Why did you decide to become a career and leadership coach? The more I was working with the team at PNG and the more I worked on myself and realized and figured out my own strengths and values and passions, I felt this is something I'm meant to do. So I feel it's kind of a calling, you know, when you know that uh, this is something that comes to you naturally. Naturally, I feel I'm uh, good with people and also enabling them, helping them see who they are and uh, enabling them to achieve what they're capable of is something that really, really drives me. So I think that was the starting point of, you know, figuring out that coaching is one way through which I can do that and then why choosing career coaching versus any other kind of coaching is more because I feel especially for Millennials for for the younger people or let's say I work with anybody who's 22 to 40 let's say um, entry level mid-year slightly senior professionals um, there's a big gap between what they are taught or what they learn and when they enter the workforce be it corporate world or startups they are blown away with what they're required to do so there's so many skills that they have to learn along the way which they're not fully equipped with um, so I think this is where uh, they need the most help so a lot of self-awareness self-discovery emotional intelligence social intelligence how to be a leader how to adopt the skills of the future and work with teams multicultural diverse ethnic teams um, in this part of the world and now navigate your way through that and grow your career through that. Tell us more about your project Unwind the Grind. What is your goal? So, so yeah, so Unwind the Grind, as I said, is a millennial career development platform. We work with young people, with millennials, uh, both in terms of one-to-one, -one, uh, career coaching, career change. A lot of people come to me, more than 80% actually of my clients come to me for changing careers. So changing industries, job roles, functions, or quitting corporate completely to start their own thing. Can we have a huge round of applause for Sarwa and thank them for their support. Are you really in charge of your career or do you think is it managed by your finances? Um, and then I work with organizations as well on how they can engage, retain uh, their millennial employees and build their leadership capabilities. Um, so it started basically again uh, wanting to make a difference to uh, young people's lives, their careers, equipping them with the right skills, with the right, um, helping them see what their strengths are, what they're good at and how they can be better leaders for the future. When you decided to become a coach, how were you promoting yourself? So I think what really helped in my case is having a business background and particularly a marketing background. So it was just a shift from uh, managing brands and doing brand management and development to managing your personal brand. So I think I relied a lot on first creating a niche that I have a target audience and a niche. So I work with millennials and my niche is career coaching, leadership coaching. And then within that uh, to market my own um, company as more of a, as a personal brand. So online presence, online persona, uh, um, website, social media, writing articles, giving interviews, um, speaking at a lot of relevant events, industry events. So I think that's the whole um, you know, cumulative effect of building your personal brand over the last now almost four years uh, really pays off. What advice would you give to those who are planning to come to Dubai and start their career here? I know everybody would like to come to Dubai and one of the biggest reasons, you know, along with a great lifestyle and everything that this place offers is also the opportunity to make more money. However, what I find working with my clients mostly is that especially young people who want to explore life and travel and have fun, yes, they come here and they are earning, you know, decent salaries compared to what they would back home, but they end up spending a lot. So, uh, and you know what happens is it limits you from uh, 
making the career changes or decisions later on that you would have if you had the money so I can't tell you how many times I have people who are who want to make a certain career change or take a sabbatical or change industries change functions but they're so scared of doing that because they don't have a financial cushion to bank on um, they don't have many savings they don't have any financial sort of security to say that okay if I make less money as I change my career from this sector to that sector I'll be okay with that or if I don't have a job I lose a job I can still be in Dubai and you know uh, ride it out for the next six to nine months so I would say when you are earning and when you are doing well focus on saving investing making your money grow making it work for you so then when the time comes to take those big decisions you have something to bank on many people apply for jobs but they have no response what should they do I think Dubai is a place which is really relationship driven, uh, network driven, who you know and being on the ground uh, matters most. It's the same across you know everywhere globally but I think here more if you really are serious about moving to Dubai and you want to find a job, be here, come here, come on a visit visa, come for a month, two months, uh, build networks, you know, see who you know, friends, friends of friends, reach out to people on LinkedIn, have meetings. Um, as long as you're clear on your job search process on where you're starting, what is the industry what is the company what is the job role you want and then you find the relevant people within that industry through your friends through your networks and connections and meet them that's how you stay visible you know to the right audience so I would say start from there uh, of course have a solid profile and LinkedIn account and resume and pre be presentable but then putting your best foot in the door with the right people to the right people matters a lot is it possible to find the balance between work and life and living in Dubai so I look I think um, uh Balance is hard to maintain uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. That's why I talk more about integration, how you can integrate your work and life and look at it from a longer term perspective. So if you look at two months, three months, four months, how are you integrating the two? I think that works better. And integration happens very well when the work that you're doing, which is anywhere a part of your life, is something that you love, something you love, something you enjoy doing, something you're passionate about. So I think it's more of a mindset. If you're gonna be hating your job and living from weekend to weekend, waiting for the next weekend so you can just blow off the steam and go party and chill and have fun then the five days of the week are going to be very miserable so the first point of integration is that you integrate work in your life in a way where you spend more than eight ten hours of your most productive day working is that you enjoy what you do and then in terms of how to manage time and balance a lot of things especially as you're living alone and chores and stuff I would say that and this is one of the lessons I've learned as well you know throughout these years is you delegate you plan well you organize well and then you try to delegate automate and be extremely efficient so for instance as an entrepreneur there are so many things I have to do uh, all by myself with a very small team and then I have family I have a daughter so a lot of family related stuff as well so I would focus on the things which are really value added and where I can add my value uh, in the best possible way and then I would delegate the other tasks which are let's say um, can be done by someone else and I don't have to spend time doing it so that way I free up a lot of my time for the more high value added stuff both for work and for personal life what if you work for a company only because of money you work hard you stay longer hours how to deal with it and avoid burnt out at work so then I would say do the best with what you have so if you know that you are in a job and you don't like it and you know that have a plan so be aware that okay I'm in this job for the reason of making money and I'm gonna be okay with that so that awareness already helps in like you know knowing your reason that okay it's gonna be for a limited amount of time and I'm in it because of the money let's say and in parallel have a plan of finding a better job so finding something more in line with what you would like to do something more interesting something more you're passionate about and uh, be clear on that plan and work on that plan because that is what what's going to keep you motivated and then uh, manage your time I would say like you know if you are doing a lot of uh, long hours uh, in one week then take the next week a bit easy uh, speak up more because a lot of time what you realize is people aren't saying what they need to say and they're kind of just taking it all in so when you need to go and tell your manager that you know enough is enough I've worked a lot and all of these things are done and I need to go a bit slow or I need uh, to prioritize my mental health I need to take a time you know a day off or I need to leave early I have family commitments or whatever speak up and uh, you know make yourself heard what challenges do you face with running your business 
a lot <laughs> okay uh, it's challenging it's not easy at all i think uh, also when you are a first time entrepreneur and you're learning and uh, realizing everything the first time it's uh, not easy you have to learn on the go and i think the market overall as well in the last couple of years has been quite up and down the cost of doing business in dubai is getting better now but four years ago when i started like everything you know the cost of hiring people licensing processes um, admin work is not easy so i think uh, at every step of the way you realize um, how you can drive more efficiencies become more effective so and and you always it's a trial and error process i think even for me in the last couple of years i've learned a lot by changing my business model strategy looking at my revenue streams pivoting improvising and learning as you go so i think i'm now i'm in a much better place but it's all because of the learning of the previous years what type of license do you use so i use a free zone license so i'm licensed with fujera creative city so it's a free zone uh, license that i can you know i can work across the uae uh, across all the emirates and uh, it covers my uh, hr consultancy coaching and event management so a lot of different things how much does it cost so because i don't have a uh, visa with this license and i don't give my employees visa as well because i don't need that it's around 14000 dirhams per year uh, it would have been higher if i need visa and i'm giving visa for my employees it would be around 2025 did you start hiring people from the beginning no 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 so it was again on and off so you know i was i was always i've always been working with some interns and freelancers but then there were times where i had an agency for a few months um i tried full time i tried part time freelancers um contractual all the different models so some work some don't work what is working for you now <laughs> What's working for me right now? I think because also I've changed the business model a bit like in the uh, last year until last year we were doing a lot of events obviously when you put up events of like 80 100 people every month every other month you need that manpower of you know uh, people videographers photographers social media PR so now that we have scaled back and we uh, the event side of things and I'm working more B2B with organizations I don't need that kind of support um, I think what works for me is uh people who are committed and you ensure their commitment by being very clear on uh, the priorities deliverables and their time needed because here I, i feel i've struggled a little bit with freelancers which is it's open and you don't know how many hours they're working and the commitment is not that high because you're not paying them that much and you know so that kind of model doesn't always work so i think you need to be very clear on okay this is how much you're going to get this is what we need and then have clear communication along the way entrepreneurs avoid burnt out it's tough it's not easy and again it's uh, everybody is in different stages of their careers or their entrepreneurial journey if you're really starting out and figuring things out and you don't know of course a lot of your time is going to be spent on finding how things are done and it will take you longer than it would have taken someone else with like 4 5 years of experience so i think um, at every step of the way it's really important to have a mentor have a coach and both are different so a mentor is somebody for instance from within your industry from within your background and who is really helping you with guidance and advice on how to go about certain things so those are the people you can bank on with okay i want to open a bank account how do what do i do which license uh, works well for my kind of industry or i'm looking to speak to this client but i'm not prepared to lead the meeting how do i go about it that's the role of a mentor a coach on the other hand is somebody who is really going to hold your hand and facilitate your growth process so if you want to deliver results that are 2x or 5x depending on the kind of coach you're getting business coach career coach whatever he's going to really help you achieve that so looking at the things that you do well uh, your strengths leveraging your strengths the things that you're not doing well burnout mental blocks limiting beliefs and thoughts fears all of those things that get in the way of us achieving our results a coach will be able to help you overcome those and address those so number one have a mentor have a coach who can you know help you really take your business forward uh, two have a strong network of people people you can rely on and bank on for advice for help for support for connecting you to the right network the right resources uh three what i mentioned before make sure that you are delegating the non value added tasks so your uh, time as an entrepreneur is spent on the most valuable things where you can personally add a lot of value because your time is uh time is money your time is valuable so you want to spend that time doing the right things and not like you know creating invoices uh, <laughs> all day long How do you spend your free time and weekends? 
Well, free time is not a luxury that I have. It's like packed back to back. I um, uh, have a lot of family related stuff obviously to do on weekends. And then that's one thing. Another thing I've done is I initially there was no boundary between uh, weekends and weekdays because I had my own business and I was doing everything, whatever I could. So even on Friday, Saturdays, I would have meetings and clients and work. Now I've stopped doing that unless it's clients who, who really cannot do any day except Saturday because they're working all, all week. Unless it's them, maybe one or two meetings, that's it. Uh, weekends are precious. It's time with family because again, my husband has a nine to five kind of job. So his only free time is weekends. Unlike me, who I, you know, I can manage my time differently. So I think I spend um, a lot of quality family time, especially in this weather, going out. Um, uh, I'm a big nature freak. So parks and uh, beach and uh, adventure sports, activities, picnics, barbecue, you know, that's kind of my thing. If you had to start over again, what would you do differently? Okay, so the first thing is I wouldn't mind starting over again and I wouldn't trade off my, what I'm doing right now for anything else. So, you know, uh, what I would do differently is taking again, you know, going back to um, the same thing I spoke about, which is your network is your net worth. So I think um, this was a lesson learned for me the hard way because when I was in PNG and, you know, getting sucked into the grind and the nine to five and the hectic workload schedule, what I didn't prioritize was building networks and uh, really knowing the right people, nurturing those relationships because they always come in handy, uh, especially when you're on your own and you don't have that big company name and brand name behind you and you want to launch your own business. So I think what I would do differently is nurture those relationships and build on them. Uh, be conscious, be proactive and intentional on growing the networks with the right people, the right industry, whatever you know uh, uh, I could. And uh, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll get back to you. And if you would like to get in touch with my guests, there are contact details in the description under this video. See you in the next episode.